Hello and hey. welcome back. <laughs> yep. So um, our next session, as I was mentioning um, previously when the previous session was ending, it's, uh, it's a really interesting one. Um, it concerns security, it concerns cloud. These are things that we all as developer have, uh, developers have encountered at some point. So we have two speakers for this one, um, both from Synthesis Software Technologies, Evan Rubin and uh, Louis-Philippe uh, Shahim. So um, we are just going to bring them in and uh, let them introduce themselves. Yeah. All right. Hi, guys. Hey. Hello, How are you guys, guys. doing? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Yeah, doing good yeah <laughs> so awesome. you guys you guys are joining from uh from south africa or um yeah, yeah? Indeed. yeah. ah okay okay <laughs> now because i heard well. yeah i heard mm -hmm. a little bit about synthesis software uh, i know you guys are based in south africa so you know this is a good time to you guys can just give a small introduction and maybe talk a little bit about synthesis software before we kick off the presentation what do you guys think so yeah yeah Go ahead. So, um, Evan, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, I'm Evan, a software engineer at Synthesis Software. Uh, we do a lot of cloud consulting. Uh, we do digital product projects, and basically, we got clients kind of throughout South Africa, a couple in Mauritius, you know, kind of spread all around. And yeah, we got a general love of tech, love of security, you know, anything kind of computer technology related. We we your go to guys. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, you're in the right place then with this uh, with yeah. the with the crowd <laughs> here. <laughs> and Louis Philippe. Yes. So I'm an AWS cloud engineer at Synthesis, and yeah, we do a lot of consulting work for, like Evan said, a lot of our clients in South Africa and Mauritius. And yeah, we're looking forward to hopefully teach you guys or. Show you something cool today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love your your logo, by the way, at Synthesis Software. The 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 three hexagons, I think, um, kind of looks mm -hmm. like microservices in a in a way. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess we leave the floor to you guys. Uh, for the viewers, well, you you've maybe gotten used to it now. Questions in the comments, <laughs> um, in the chat, feedback in the chat, and uh, enjoy the show. All right. Oh, we wish they would have been there with you in beautiful Mauritius to meet you all in person. But uh, sadly, this picture of us from earlier this year outside the Grand Buyers Land Shark will have to do. So like, like I said, my name is Louis Philip or LP Shahim, a cloud engineer and AWS solutions architect at Synthesis. And I like to party. And my name is Evan Rubin, also a cloud engineer at Synthesis, AWS certified with six certifications, an interest in cloud computing, cloud security, and basically anything tech related. So we're going to take you through a bit of our journey of making a cloud security, governance, and functional learning tool that we call Unomia. So next is a view of, on the team who started this journey with us. And apart from the two dashing gentlemen on the sides who are your presenters today, uh, we have Matt which is our business analyst and security specialist. We have JP, a cloud engineer and cloud practice lead at Synthesis. And finally, we have Paul, a cloud engineer and tech lead at Synthesis. And as you can see, all those late nights working together helped us cement our bond as the powerhouse and manly team that you see there. <laughs> And just finally, a shout out and thanks to the team for keeping the initial Unomia vision alive. Cool. So now that you've seen what the team looks like, let's take a second to brag a little. The team's highly experienced in the corporate cloud security front with over 10 combined years of experience. We have 23 AWS certifications between us, you know, ranging from associate, professional, as well as security specialty level certifications and plenty more in the pipeline to come. Despite being so experienced, we are a very tight-knit team and have a passion for what we do. Now, the initial stages of Unomia were treated as a bit of a Skunks Works project, with many evenings and many weekends spent together hacking away at the foundations of this tool that you'll see today. So from our years of cloud consulting for very large firms, 
we found various issues and blockers that led to the formation of eunomia. There are lots of red tape and bottlenecks in many processes, such as permission requests, access requests, and change requests, especially in the cloud divisions, where the cloud encourages freedom and continuous deployments. As a developer, you need the freedom to innovate and build. But with the huge skill shortage of cloud security experts and general lack of cloud knowledge, we can't just let our developers run free as there are large risks of data leaks, breaches, and various other smart attacks that people are coming up with. All of this is scary, right? Wrong. With the help of Unomia, all of these concerns can be covered and your developers can roam free on their daily duties improving productivity and turnaround times. Cool. So let's paint a picture for you guys and give you a bit of a practical example. So picture this. You're sitting writing your final accounting exam and you're very certain that you know all your debits and credits match up and balance. Well, you know, at least close enough for you to kind of pass. Then your favorite teacher, Miss Assets comes walking past and checks up on her favorite student's work and rolls her eyes. She's unpleasantly surprised to see all of your workings. So you very quickly realize that what you thought was just a small little problem turned out to be tax evasion you know, at the highest level. So you fix it up really quickly, just in time for Miss Assets to do one more walk past. And this time, looking quite a bit more pleased with your work. Miss Assets is Unomia, your biggest asset when it comes to governance, security, and education within cloud development. Unomia ensures that you are guided in your everyday practice and that your little mistakes don't result in devastating consequences. So let's get a little bit more serious. Why would you use Unomia? So Unomia will help detect and rectify any gaps in your AWS cloud infrastructure as well as configuration based off of AWS's best practice, our cloud experience, as well as your organizational requirements. Because AWS has made it so easy for you to just go and cowboy around the console, Unomia acts as your guardrails to ensure that you can still cowboy, but without having, without having significant or any damage. Unomia will help you remove all of the red tape that you find at large corporates as well as facilitate the guardrails for your account, making it available to all sized businesses, as well as for private use. It will give you enterprise level security for any use case, but at a fraction of the cost, all with one central view of your account or accounts for anyone, including your CTO, to follow up your remediation progress and to get a current state snapshot. So Unomia was built and backed by AWS well-architected partners with the idea that it will allow anyone, regardless of their cloud level, to run a well-architected review on their workload. It also helps Synthesis conduct their well-architected reviews more efficiently to give you, the clients, a much more enjoyable experience, as well as many more benefits when having your review conducted by us, a registered well-architected partner. Our policies that we run have recommendations to help guide you to your remediation. You can jump to the violating resources from the front end to also help you easily remediate it. With our end goal eventually being to automatically remediate the violating resources on discovery or on demand by the user. The name Eunomia comes from the name of the minor Greek goddess of law and legislation which can also be translated as good order or governance according to good laws, as well as the springtime goddess of greener pastures. And these greener pastures are similar to where your management is likely to be playing golf. Seriously though, Unomia is a group of small, incredibly smart, decoupled components, all coming together to provide you with the security that you never knew you needed. So let's dig in and give you all a better view. At a high level, 
Unomia is a serverless cloud governance tool that is focused on desired state management and functional learning. There are four main parts to Unomia. We have an advanced rules engine, an informative dashboarding and metrics, on-demand and real-time scanning of your environment, as well as reporting on all of the above. Our advanced rule engine is based off of lots of serverless decoupled components coming together to build the brain behind Unomia. We have based our core around an open source software called Cloud Custodian and have built over 60 custom policies and chained many of them together to give you a full view of your AWS estate. The next components we will speak about are the dashboarding, metrics aggregation, and reporting capabilities of Unomia. We give you a central view of all the vulnerabilities within multiple AWS accounts. We provide learnings for you in the form of recommendations for fixing those vulnerabilities that are found. We also give full control over who can see these findings and who can modify your account by providing various granular roles for Unomia users. We have also built in a Unomia index, giving you an immediate evaluation of the state of your account from the Unomia findings. Either your, account, either your accounts are in a good state, they need some work, or they require some immediate attention. Currently, the levels of, on the policies are graded on severity. We have used our experience and expertise to give them default values. And ultimately, you would have the power to change these values and fully customize your experience in order to meet your business needs. We have daily automated checks that are run for all accounts at 8 a.m. GMT plus two. With our on-demand scans, we give you the ability to run a scan on your accounts as required, multiple times daily over and on top of the automatic trigger. Our real-time scans are where the true power of this tool comes out. We give you the ability to have real-time monitoring on your account. This means that as soon as you spin up something bad, Within seconds, you can be notified of the finding, or even have Unomia remediate the misconfigured resource for you, automatically based off of best practice. And if you are comfortable with it, Unomia can have the power to remove the resource from your account entirely upon detection. The backend is built up of various AWS services. We have Cognito being used as our identity provider, giving us authentication and authorization for our users and endpoints. We have lambdas and lambda layers being used for all of, our all, of the <laughs> all of the little logical components, assisting us with signups and scaling our functionality. ECS and ECR, these are used to hold our containerized logical components for our front end providing us with decoupled microservices and scaling out for the user base. API Gateway is set up to mitigate any attempts at accessing resources directly and abstracting all of the logic from the outside world. RDS, we specifically use Aurora Serverless as our current data store, allowing us for scalable and highly available solutions, keeping our data readily available and secure. We also have S3, which is used as a data store for our policies and template files. And finally, we use DynamoDB for mapping our policies to their locations on S3, as well as for real-time auditing. The front end is deployed using AWS Amplifier and is all written in Angular. We have deployed the front end. We, we have the front end deployment pipeline running off any mergers to our release branch, making our release process efficient and fully automated. Speaking of our CRCD pipelines, they again are all AWS native and we use code build as well as code pipeline. We have code build to build our APRs and ECS containers to store them on ECR. And we have Code Pipeline, which will orchestrate all of the builds for us. 
This ensures that the deployments are done efficiently and as needed. Finally, we are firm believers in infrastructure as code. It really helps us to make our code transferable and reusable, as well as assisting with our infrastructure state management. We are using three different providers for this. We have AWS CloudFormation, utilized by our users in order to deploy all of the required roles and permissions that Unomia needs within their AWS account. HashiCorp Terraform, which is used to manage all of our, all of our infrastructure as code for the application infrastructure. And finally, we use serverless framework to manage and deploy our PDF reporting solution. So now that you know what's powering Unomia and holding us all together, let's walk you through the logic flow diagram of Unomia. So first, we got to find ourselves an AWS newbie. Then, probably the most important part of this logic flow is your CTO, who can then you know go out, play some golf, or you know whatever his heart desires, because he knows thanks to Unomia, his environment will be safe. Next, we need to have an AWS account created as well as a Unomia account created, which will link up to your AWS account. We then go and we'll choose some Unomia policies that we want running to help and secure our workload. Then we need to develop our application. This will be done free of any bottlenecks or red tape, all with Unomia watching us and notifying us of anything that we could have misconfigured. Once you're happy with the state of your application, we can then release it to the public. But remember the final step to ensure to keep monitoring through Unomia for any configuration or infrastructure changes so you don't get any surprises. Now that we know the high level overview, let's talk about the actual flow of Unomia in order to understand the technologies used and how they all linked up. Let's start with our two ways of triggering a scan in your accounts for vulnerabilities. You are able to manually run from the website, run the scan from the website, or alternatively, we have a daily run using our cron job running at 8 a.m. GMT plus two. These triggered events are sent to a queue. The queue then triggers an orchestration lambda, which will then handle all of our fan arts and is the start of our logic. This Lambda fetches the required account data from our Aurora serverless RDS DB. This Lambda will then fan out to run all of the Unomia logic, ensuring that the tasks are run in parallel and do not time out. The fan out of this is shown in more detail on the next slide. The Unomia Lambda will fetch various information from DynamoDB as well as S3 around the accounts to run on and the actual policy files to run on that particular account. With these policies and account numbers, it will then use a cross-account role to go into your account and scan for any non-compliant mm -hmm. resources. Once we have the results of these scans, the Lambda will then send a notification through SNS in order to trigger the analysis process. This SNS topic triggers an analysis lambda, which will go and analyze all the results as well as sort them out if the customers have decided to mute some of their notifications. It also writes all of the findings, muted or not, to our findings database for our audit trails. Again, from this lambda, they are, the communication is decoupled from the next stage with another queue, and this queue will trigger another lambda for notifications. If the client has configured any reactive policies on their account, these notifications will then be sent to them through AWS SES. Finally, we have our PDF generator feature. This is used to generate reports upon request from the user or from the front end of our website. These reports are all on the findings within their AWS accounts. If we take a step back, one of the main reasons we opted for the serverless approach is the scalability. If you think about it, if we have a thousand users, all of which have two AWS accounts, each running 60 policies on them, that means that every morning 
at 8 a.m. We need to accommodate for 12,000 instances of our application running. With this scalability of our Lambda spanning out, it allows all of these to run simultaneously, leaving no downtime and servers being bombarded with all of these requests and our clients getting the results almost immediately. Illustrates the calling of as many instances of Unomia as required in the form of Unomia Lambdas. This res these results are all lined up in our queue as to not lose any data and all the findings are written accordingly, no matter how many account scans are running simultaneously. Next, before we get to the real fun stuff, let's have a quick walkthrough and have a look at one of our customizable policies. They are all written in YAML, which we are able to variableize and templatize any of our fields. First, some important points to point out, we have custom labels to help sort out on the front end. So you can see the labels of this policy have been set to latest. We know it's the latest version. And we have AWS SG, which means it's linked to the resource of AWS Security Group. Next, we have the ability to account for custom regions. This makes sure that no matter which region your, uh, your resources live in or where you are based in the world, you can have your account secured using Unomia. We can variableize sections and reuse them in our policies. This helps clean up the policies a bit and lets you have you know, no duplicated code. You have everything written once that you need, and you can use it as many times as required. And then finally, we can have custom rules, or as we call them, filters, as well as recommendations based on your organizational needs. If you look on the left, we have a recommendation, as this is a security uh, policy, security group policy, we want to limit our ingress and egress RP ranges. You know, you don't want your security group open to everyone. And if you look at our filters or the rules on the right, we can see that we're checking for whatever ports you want in, whatever SADA blocks you want in. So we can customize this as much as we like, and we can use these policies to help us secure your AWS accounts. With the help of the serverless framework, we were able to quickly and easily deploy a PDF generator with encryption capabilities in order to send out Unomia reports based on our findings. We found that our customers wanted the ability to send their golf course bound CTOs reports to show the progress that they have made over a given period of time. The most requested feature was to see a delta of the findings over that particular period of time. So we decided to give the users the ability to enable or disable both detailed reporting and or encryption to send these confidential findings out to the relevant parties. Cool. So now that we've taken you through all the theory that you need to know, I think it's time that we give you guys a nice practical demo to show you that our tool works as magnificently as we told you it did. So let's start off here. If we go on to the AWS console, and we've already created a Unomia user for us to sign into. Sorry, our Unomia <laughs> dashboard, not the AWS console. We've already created a user for Unomia. If you don't have a user, there's a little button at the bottom to let you create an account. Cool, so once we've signed in, LP will take you through a bit of a walkthrough of our dashboard and all the features we have there. Cool, so what you're currently seeing now is a very refined version of what we started off with. Um, we try to set this up in such a way that it gives the user a good flow of how this tool works and gives them a kind of walkthrough with buttons and um, a guide on the left-hand side just to see exactly the process that you need to follow to set yourself up. So if we look at this dashboard, immediately you see the Unomia index on the top right-hand corner. And that's at a glance to see what state your accounts are in. You also have the PDF reporting directly from um, this dashboard. And then you can immediately, there's a, a quick button to create your Unomia account, which as Evan mentioned, is just a grouping of all of your AWS accounts. So if we go through on the left, once you've created your Unomia accounts, you would be able to see them here. 
Then we have AWS accounts, which allows you to add those specific AWS accounts and link them to a particular Unomia account. So you could group, for example, your dev accounts or your production accounts into different Unomia accounts. Then one of the big drives we had for this tool was to try to automate the well-architected reviews. Um, and if you are familiar with any, or if you are familiar with the well-architected tool, um, you'll probably recognize some of these questions because they, at the moment, we are only catering for the security pillar within the well-architected pillars. Then we have managed Unomia policies. These are the ones that Evan mentioned. These are um, a bunch of our managed policies and based on our recommendations of issues that we've found and you can immediately um, configure any of these policies for your particular accounts. And then finally, um, the configured policies is what you would see for once you have configured any of the policies on your accounts. Cool. So I think let's now just go through the whole process. We've walked you through what it looks like. So let's show you guys in practice how it works. So first, we'll go and create ourselves a Unomia account. You can call this whatever you want at your grouping of the accounts. So we're going to just call it DevConf for our purposes. You can now see if you go to Unomia accounts that we have this Unomia account called DevConf. It allows you on the right hand side to add users. It also lets you manage users. So some of the conditions we do is we do check that the user you're trying to add is a registered Unomia user. So if you try add someone that's not a Unomia user, you can try add them as any role. And there's a little pop up at the top that tells you, you know, sorry, we can't do that. They're not a user. If you do add someone that is an actual Unomia user, so for example, we'll go and add my user. We'll see, give it a role, and once you add it, you can then see that you have that user now on your Unomia account. So we've got our nice dev, uh, demo user, and we've got me on this account. Now that we've got a Unomia account, let's go and add an AWS account um, for the demo. Cool. So what we're going to do is you can see there's a whole lot of fields that you need to add in in order for us to be able to use it on your account. We need your account name. This is, again, what you want to see as your friendly account name when you go in. Name it something useful so that you don't forget what they are. You need your account ID so that we know which account we're going to be speaking to. And then you need to assign it to a Unomia account. So we are assigning it to our DevConf account. It gives us a summary of all the roles that it will need in the account. And then it asks you what emails you want registered to, to send notifications to. These emails you don't need to be Unomia users for. Again, for examples before, some people might not want to see the dashboard. They might just want some you know, daily updates on how your account's doing or notifications on what's happening. So these can be any, any email addresses. We validate that they're valid email addresses, but we don't care if they're Unomia users or not. We then have the notification severity. It just lets us say, you know, based on the Unomia index, at what point do we want to notify us of a problem? Some people might only notify you when the account's in a very bad state. Some people want notifications if you know it's above zero, if there's anything wrong. So we've catered to kind of all the users. Once we create the account, you can see the nice red little bubble of account state. Um, what this means is we haven't been able to verify it's your account. You need the roles in your account for us to be able to speak to your account and know it's you. So we've made this little handy launch CloudFormation stack button right there for your accounts. When you click it, it takes you to the console, AWS console, giving you a nice little summary of what, you're, what we're going to be deploying into your account. We do have to check the little box at the bottom. We are creating IAM roles, and it's just a little security check so that you know you, you should actually look through this you know, before, before you need to deploy it. So what we create, as you can see while it goes through, is there's a couple roles that we need for our deployers. We've got some garbage collection happening so that we don't just leave stuff lying around in your account. And all of these roles kind of follow AWS best practices of the least privileged permissions. And we make sure 
that those roles are made through cloud formation. You have full control over these roles. If you're not happy with them in your account, you're more than welcome to go and delete the stack. That's all in your control. It's not like you've signed up and signed your life away. If you're not happy, that's as simple as going and deleting the stack. Once you've created the roles, you can see you get a nice little welcome email telling you we've successfully validated your account and we use the email addresses of your Unomia account. So, you know, if you didn't do something, we've given you a nice little email there to, to complain to, if need be. Hopefully never though. <laughs> what we then do is we'll go test the access again. So if you just click check in the access for the account, and it will go through the process of running a, running a check. Once you just refresh the page and you have a look at your AWS accounts, we then should hopefully see it nice and green to say, cool, we've verified it's your account, you spun up all the roles and we're good to go. So I think the next step, I mean, all this is cool to see, but let's show you guys how it works. Let's show you, let's configure a policy. Let's do a reactive policy. We spoke about you know, the security groups earlier. So let's add a policy for notifying us on any bad security groups showing up in our account. We select which account we want it for. We select what region we're going to be deploying the resources into or what region you want to monitor. And then you save it. If you go to configured policies at the bottom, you'll see that cool. Now we have this policy configured for our AWS account. We then go through, we say we want to run this because we just want to make sure that you know, the policy is there, it's all being configured. We get a nice little successful message and we know, cool, our account is now being monitored for any bad security groups spinning up in the account. So let's go and do something bad. Let's go to our AWS account and let's create a security group. Let's make it not a very good security group. So I guess a naughty DevConf security group is a good name for it. And give it a nice little description because I mean, you should be describing everything you're doing. So when you come back, you know what you did. And let's add a horrible, horrible inbound rule of, you know, maybe some old traffic to the security group. Uh, I guess for those of you not familiar, this just means if we put this on a box, anyone anywhere in the world can now connect to this box that holds the security group. We're basically saying we don't care about firewalls. We brave enough to just open everything up to the world. <laughs> so what we've done now is we've created that security group. We're not actually going to attach it to anything because that's not very clever, but that's now being created in the background. What you know me is doing is it's monitoring our cloud trail events. So at seeing that someone's gone a user in the account, it's created the security group. It's created the security group saying all traffic is allowed into this box from anywhere in the world, and it triggers up, you know, this is a horrible thing to do. So we get a nice little email telling us that, you know, this is a reactive security alert. Someone in your account seems to have created an open security group. So, you know, within seconds, it comes up, it tells you, you know, this guy's done something bad. It gives you a recommendation. We've also got a little recommendation URL for you guys to use. If you go to that, that just takes you to uh, AWS documentation. It kind of gives you, you know, their their way of how you should set it up. It gives you their best practice and just kind of runs you through a little bit of what they want you to do. These are all customizable, as we said before. So if your organization has a different recommendation or their own documents, you can link it to that. If you look at our found resources, we found our naughty DevConf security group, which was the bad one that we just created tells us which account it's in, which region, and just a little bit of details to help you kind of remediate and fix the problems. Cool. So if we go back, let's run a well-architected uh, framework quickly. So what we call them is a WAF pack. We've done, as LP mentioned before, we've started with just the security pillar. So we're going to select all of them. We're going to say we want to run it on our DevConf account, and we'll just run the WAF pack. In the background, this is going to go run a whole lot of chain together policies, find any findings on the account. So if we have a look, we've left the resource. We can see that you know this naughty DevConf guy is one of the bad things for a well-architected review. We've let you switch between accounts. As this runs, we find some more findings. And we let you see 
you know, how they're categorized. We give you the ability to see your high, your really bad alerts. You can see your medium alerts, the ones that, you know, are bad, but could be a lot worse. So you can see, you know, what policy they ran, what security question from the well architect review it is. So this all helps us kind of remediate your well, uh, remediate your account based on the well architected reviews. It helps us facilitate the reviews. We can do them a lot quicker. Uh, you know, usually the couple hour process of running the review and then the couple week process of running through the account, seeing what are the bad resources, how do we remediate them? You know, this cuts down our time by, you know, tenfold easily, where we can see, cool, these are all the really bad things. Like you can click through, you can see what they are, and you know exactly where to find them on the AWS console and where to fix them. We have added the ability to mute these resources. So like we mentioned before, if it's meant to be like that, sometimes your configuration doesn't follow best practice on purpose. Sometimes you have a public S3 bucket that's used for a website. That's allowed. There's nothing bad with that. So you can mute them. And that means next time this runs, it won't actually notify you that that's a problem. So overall, the tools kind of built to help you built alongside with cloud engineers running these well architected reviews, running the security policies, doing the checks and remediations on accounts. So we've built it based on what's most needed by different people. The final thing that we've got on here is our PDF reporting. Um, if we just go up a bit, we can see we can generate PDF reports based on all of these findings. What this lets us do is we can either do an encrypted report. So, you know, sometimes these things are highly confidential. You don't want people knowing what's in your state if they do get out. So we can add a password to them. We've also got the ability to have a summary. If you, you know, want just a high level of what's found, basically what you're seeing on the dashboard, we send that. Or you click the detailed box and it will send through a detailed report to, to the users you've specified in that email addresses. Again, those users there can be anyone. They don't have to be Unomia users. The only thing you need to be a Unomia user for is to actually get access to the front end. So you can see your Unomia index has jumped up quite a lot on this account. We did leave it as quite a dirty account just to show you guys, you know, it's not so great. We just, not everyone's perfect. Like we might be, maybe not for the demo though. <laughs> So the PDF will then kind of generate in the background, the PDF engine goes through and sends through an email in the form of a you know me a report to you. What you can do is open it up, you can enter the password that you encrypted it with, and it will show you a nice little detailed view of all your findings, if we remember what password we sent it with. <laughs> Cool. So you can see it gives you a nice little account overview, tells you there were 31 findings in your account, what date it was, and as LP mentioned before, we've got the nice feature of a time delta. So you can say, you know, how many findings do we have yesterday? How many do we have today? Is the team making some progress on remediating? It also gives you an overview of the different resources and how many findings there were per resource. And then a detailed overview of all the resource names to give you an idea of, you know, where you can find them on the console. Yeah. Um, so that's all, folks. <laughs> Just a quick thank you to the organizers for putting all of this together. And thank you to you guys for listening. And please don't hesitate to give us any feedback. All of our contact details are on our website. And if time allows it, we're happy to take some Hey guys, thank you so much for the talk. It was very interesting. Let me just check real quick if you have any questions. <laughs> sure. I hope we were okay. detailed enough. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you guys did really good because I don't see any questions for now. <laughs> well, so... <laughs> Hopefully our website answers all of yeah. the questions <laughs> and the demo, yeah, I yeah. hope that answers all of the questions. Yeah, so I mean it is a free to use tool, so feel free to sign up, play around on your personal accounts and, you mm -hmm. know, just have fun. Yeah. Okay, well, guys, thank you so much for your time. If you have anything you want to add before leaving us, feel free. But... Oh.
Yeah, I think that's all from our side. Yeah. Just thank you guys so much for the opportunity. Okay, awesome, Ben. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Cheers.